Hello everyone, it's your boy Koi. Wonderful Wednesday to you. Last week, so many of you accepted my challenge. You giving me a unique word of your choice to work into the show. We had a lot of fun responses, so we're doing it again. It's Your Word Wednesday. Follow me at Koi Wire on Insta, Snapchat, and TikTok, and put your challenge words in the comment section of my most recent post, and we're gonna choose one fun word to work into Friday's show. All right, it's time for the best 10 minutes in news, because it's with you right here on CNN 10. We start with news on a winter storm. This week, all across the country, winter storm warnings warnings, winter storm watches, and winter weather advisories have been issued by the National Weather Service. The strong start to the snow season is in place for an area that extends as far east as the upper Midwest, northern Great Lakes, and interior parts of the Northeast. In fact, 25 million people from Texas to Mississippi are under threat of severe storms. In the South, two tornado watches are in effect, one in the Dallas area, the other in southern Oklahoma. And about 15 million people, largely in the north central U.S., are under winter weather warnings or advisories, including fears of intense snow, ice, hail, and freezing rain. These storms are leaving a trail of damage, especially in parts of Oklahoma and Texas where buildings were wiped off of their foundation and homes and businesses were seriously damaged. In addition, roads were closed and traffic was delayed. This remains a developing story. We're going to keep you updated right here on CNN 10 throughout the rest of this week. 10 second trivia. In science, what is occurring when two atoms slam together to form a heavier atom? Combustion, fusion, fission, or oxidation? Answer here is fusion. When two or more atoms are joined together to make a larger atom. This week, scientists with the U.S. Department of Energy have reached a breakthrough in nuclear fusion. For the first time ever in a lab setting, researchers say they generated more energy from a fusion reaction than they used to start the process. We're talking two or more atoms being fused together to form a larger one. And if scientists figure this out, fine tune it, and harness this capability, we could potentially power our entire house from essentially a glass of water forever. This could help end dependence on fossil fuels. Talk about a game changer in the future of clean energy. We'll go now to CNN national correspondent Renee Marsh for more of the science behind the story. Well, scientists at a Department of Energy lab in California have figured out how to successfully produce a nuclear fusion reaction with a net energy gain. That means they've succeeded in taking two hydrogen atoms and using 192 powerful lasers to force those atoms to fuse together, unleashing the same kind of energy that powers the sun and stars. Until now, that has been incredibly difficult to replicate here on Earth. The key is, though, that they've been able to release more energy from the reaction than they use in the fusion process itself, and that's critically important. For anything to be a viable source, it needs to have a higher energy output than the energy input used to generate the power. So this is a huge moment, uh, mostly because the discovery could eventually unlock an unlimited, cheap, clean power source for the world. Now, this discovery has also proved this is a viable energy source and no longer a hypothetical scenario. But as major as this is in the quest to pivot away from dirty energy sources like fossil fuels, we're still a far way off from powering our homes by way of nuclear fusion. It's estimated it could take two, even three decades before this energy source is widely used. Renee Marsh, CNN, Washington. When Hurricane Ian pummeled Florida in late September, it brought over $50 billion in damage to the state and tragically took lives of 148 people. It also had an unexpected consequence. It destroyed Florida's bee colonies. The colonies are used to pollinate the nation's agriculture. CNN chief climate correspondent Bill Weir spoke to Florida beekeepers about what this could mean. Now you gotta get a handful of bees. Really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm not usually in the habit of accepting a handful of stinging insects, but Keith Council has a 40-year professional relationship with honeybees. And you never, rarely wear a veil or gloves or anything. Don't really need to. And these days, they need all the love they can get. Hurricane Ian arrived at the worst possible time for this business, just as beekeepers from around the country were set up to catch the autumn bloom of the Brazilian pepper tree. Whole yard went under. 
The storm drowned and crushed hundreds of thousands of hives, killing countless millions of bees. It's gone. I have to come back. There ain't nothing left. You could actually see a water line where it came up to here. And because Ian blew away so much vegetation, those that survived are starving. Some of these bees have gotten three shots of feed, and that's a gallon. So you're talking about 36 pounds of feed already. And you can still go back after they suck the feed down, and it looks like they never were fed at all. They're just starving. They're just starving. Yeah, it's nonstop. So it's just an added cause. And you're just trying to do the best. You have to make that tough decision of, really, is it worth the money, uh, the financial cost to try to save it? Or do you just have to walk away and, and take your medicine? This is all bee food. This will be uh, used uh, for liquid bee food, yep. At Man Lake Bee and Ag Supply, they're mixing sugar water as fast as they can. And while some bee farmers file for federal relief, the Greater Good Charity is giving away a quarter ton of pollen substitute. Where we have donated meals to food pantries for humans, we've donated animal supplies to animal shelters, and now we're donating this bee pollen substitute to these farmers here. Can't forget the bottom of the food chain, right? <laughs> Can't forget what helps get all the other food uh, to, to the table as well. But even if their bees recover, the whole business depends on the health of the almond crop in California, now shrinking under mega drought. If the drought takes out the almond crop in California, that the whole beekeeping industry is going to be in trouble. And, and there's no feral bees. There's no wild bees can't survive on their own. He explains that pesticides, development, and invasive pests have made it impossible for bees to survive without deliberate human care. And if all the beekeepers released all of their bees, every beekeeper in the country, if they just released all their bees into the wild, we estimate it'd be about two to three years before bees would just collapse. Bees are the most important farmer. They're the most forgotten as well. And that's why we just need the entire public to really continue to get involved in bees. And, and a little two beehives makes a big impact. They went totally underwater somehow made it. In the meantime, all Keith can do is pick up the pieces and focus on the survivors, like the hive he found drowned inside a water meter box near Fort Myers Beach. It's a different feeling when you have bees walking all it over really you. It really is, it really yeah. is. And nobody's getting stung. No. You know, they're doing their thing. Maybe they can sense uh, we're rooting for them, you know? Well, and that's... We appreciate them. That's part of the thing. You have, to, you have to treat them with respect. When you get down to it, the bees are the pillars to all agriculture, and it's, they're the pillars to our whole civilization. And up next, an adorable story for our 10 out of 10. The Los Angeles County Department of Animal Care and Control has strict rules about what types of animals people can have in their yards, but they were hit with cuteness overload when they got a letter from a six-year-old Madeline asking if they'd let her keep a unicorn in their backyard if she's able to catch one someday. Well, knowing that unicorns are notoriously difficult to find in Los Angeles, the department went ahead and gave her a stuffed unicorn in the meantime, along with a permanent unicorn license. Good luck, Madeline. All right, special shout out to Valley View Junior High in Jonesboro, Arkansas. Go Blazers! We hope you and everyone watching around the world have a wonderful one. Can you believe that we're fewer than three weeks until 2022 is over? Well, I can't wait to celebrate the new year with you. I'm Coy Wire, and this is CNN 10.